I'm Duncan from Auto Shine and Tintin, and have we got a special video for you today? We have got these two beautiful cars in, and we are imagining you, our lovely viewer, are millionaires, and you've got to choose which luxury SUV you're going to roll around in. So we've got the Cullinan, we've got the Range Rover SV. We understand lots of people don't even see these vehicles on the road, never mind what they're like inside. So we are going in depth and taking you with us. So I'm not gonna to get too much into why the vehicles are with us, but needless to say, they've both had PPF, they're both fully protected for the road. This one's had a few cosmetic looks, we've done the satin and the carbon, but I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Check our social medias to find out what we've done to each vehicle to find the details. Well, this particular car, this is the SV, so this is the daddy, this is the best one. Imagine you need to choose one of these vehicles. We're just gonna go through, try and identify which one is best, what will we have? So first things first, I've gotta talk about a hate for the Range Rover, and that is, when you press these buttons, I like the fact the door's open, makes them look sleek, the handle's open, sorry, that makes it look sleek, but the noise they make, try, try and get a noise of this. I don't know if you can pick that up. It's really loud, it's like, out of a Velar, but I swear a Velar isn't that noisy. So now we're inside, it's all very nice, just as you'd expect. It's a very minimalistic design on the inside of the range. Although it's minimalistic, what confuses me is that there's a lot going on with the different colours and finishes. So you've got, even on this, just the steering wheel, you've got the dark grey, the white leather, the silver trim, the gloss black bits, and that's just the steering wheel. And then the rest of the dash, you've got this introduction of the dark chrome as well, and the satin black here. So there's absolutely loads going on, but the design itself is minimalistic and obviously you could probably choose this to be however you want. Headlining's lovely. It's from a new fabric that Land Rover have developed, I believe, for their new range of vehicles. So it's not leather, it's not Alcantara or suede or anything like that. It's like, it's just a really nice soft fabric. Put the ignition on for you. But uh, you've got the climate down there, all very simple. And then everything else is done on the screen. Uh, drive mode selected there, but yeah, nothing else to really say fridge in there obviously let's jump in the back this is the standard wheelbase model again you've got an introduction of another fabric so you've got like this denim on the back of the seats i really really like that i saw it on the new range Rover sport when we went to the launch about a year ago now i wasn't too sure of it i said i like the fabric but do i want it in the back of a range rover but now i've seen it on a production car it's it's very very nice Obviously this is a standard wheelbase, so you haven't got all the leg room in the world. The seats go back, I mean, this is as reclined as it goes. I do love how reclined it is. Don't know, I suppose if you're gonna spend more time in the back, you're gonna have a long wheelbase, aren't you? You've got a screen down here, all that slide to open. So that does the climate, the seats, the lighting, and the blinds, which you've also got. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Oh, I pressed the button and that's going in. And I'm guessing, oh, I don't have to do anything. It's all electric. That's very fancy, isn't it? No jokes in the comments about the fact it's a Land Rover and that will break soon. Don't want to hear any of that. Thank you very much. Not, not quite as spaceful as you'd think, but standard wheelbase. So before jumping in the Rolls Royce, let's just talk about the size of the vehicles. With the Rolls Royce, straight away you are away you're it, it feels a massive it really does feel a big big car and i was really surprised when i've pulled them both outside the workshop to see that although both these vehicles are in the lowest suspension setting the range rover actually is a little bit bigger at the front than the rolls the roof on the rolls royce is probably about two inches higher but all in all that rolls royce feels massive compared to the range so i'm really surprised to see that there's not much in it rolls royce is slightly longer but it feels hell of a lot bigger than what it actually is. So getting into the rolls, we open this door. My first, you see, it's, it's all about impressions, isn't it? So my first impression on the Range Rover is you've got the horrible noise that sounds like this really noisy electric motor when the door handle opens, which I don't like. Rolls-Royce, you just open the door, and then the best thing on the Rolls-Royce is you don't have to close the door. You can literally scare Nathan to death and make him pull back because you have a button to press there <laughs> to make Nathan jump. 
closes the door. That is really, really nice. I think every car should have that. Unless Rolls-Royce have painted it that design and that mechanical system, I will not forgive Range Rover for not for making you have to close your own door. Getting into the Rolls-Royce, you're obviously, it's nice, isn't it? The quality is bang on. But it is in the Range Rover, but you've got just a steering wheel, you've got this lovely black leather, the wood, gloss black and the chrome it all works really really well together this wood is special you can see they've gone to great lengths to get the grain of the wood right in the middle i love that everything is symmetrical someone with ocd like me that just works i also like the look with all the buttons and the switches i can imagine some people like the digital look of the and the minimalistic of the range rover but for me I just want, I find it quite a little bit boring to look at compared to something like that and it just looks nice and beefy. I, I just really, really like it. And when you start this car, it's a notably smoother. This Rolls-Royce has got 590 brake horsepower. So it is quicker than one of them, but again, it's not about quickness in this comparison. It's about refinement. This is a re very, very refined car. This is a little more refined than that car, but they're both very, very nice. Let's get in the back. You've got the buttons up here to close the door. Obviously you don't close any doors in your Rolls Royce. The wood continues throughout with the chrome. It's absolutely lovely. Press that, you get this access to this controller. You press this button here and the table folds down and the screen comes out and then you can control. You've got all your radio settings, your time driven distance. You've got a sat nav. It's really, really nice. You control everything on there. So we'll pop that away. You do have a little bit more leg room in the back of the rolls. Not too much though, but, and I don't think they do a long wheelbase cullen and it's the only one, but you do have more leg room. So you press that and then you open this and it gives you a look at that. So you've got a wine chiller or champagne chiller with two glass flutes, real glass. Isn't that really, really nice? The quality of everything is just superb. And then it's a weird thing, it's a weird option to have as a favourite, but it is it is a really, really nice option. And I've never seen it on other cars. So you've got this glass screen in between the cabin and the luggage compartment, and it's just it just adds a bit of luxury to it because it really cuts down on the road noise and stuff like that. As for everything else, it's just lovely. You can recline the seats obviously and also no blind no like fixed blinds you actually have curtains in the back again really really nice so to summarize range rover or rolls royce i haven't we've got to talk about costs because unfortunately even if you're a millionaire money comes into the situation the range rover specced up that one i don't know exactly but i'm guessing about 180 185 this Cullinan, I don't know exactly, but Cullinans are normally 350, 380, maybe 400K. It's a lot of money. I think it's safe to say the Cullinan is double the money of that Range Rover, which is mental to say, but that Range Rover is a very, very good car. You've got to think of the Range Rover as sort of like 97, 98% and the Cullinan's 100%. We're only talking a few degrees off. So for me, if I had a million pound in the bank, and you'd have to spend a third of it on this Cullinan and that would be uncomfortable. So it depends what other income you've got in at the same time. The Range Rover is a much easier pill to swallow at 180K. So it just depends on your financial situation. But yes, the Cullinan is just that little degree better, but the Range Rover you can't take away from. Let us know what you think. Which one would you have? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. It's been great. Subscribe, like, comment. We appreciate it and we see you all. We'll see you next time.